Hi, everyone, and welcome to Zen and Tech, our podcast focused on centering your inner geek and using technology to help you deal with the stresses of a connected life. I'm Renee, and your host for the show is Georgia. Before we begin, I just want to remind you that while Georgia is a therapist, she's not your therapist. Everything said or implied in this episode is for informational and entertainment purposes only and shouldn't be taken in any way as a replacement for personal, professional care. Georgia, how are you? I'm doing really well. I I'm just, excited. We haven't had a Zen and Tech in about ooh, three weeks, so I've been missing it. Yeah, we, we, we didn't get things done. We have to make sure that we get things done. Exactly that. Well, we, want, we, we, we were going to try and do it last week, but it wasn't going to be the best show that we could do. And we didn't want to half-ass it when the full-ass was available. We wanted to make sure that we, we did a good show for our audience. So we decided to wait and get all our stuff together and, and do a good show. Exactly, because you're worth it. And it's a show that means a lot to me. Yeah, so the theme of the show, as far as you have deigned to inform me, is on focus, what it is, why it matters, and how to get better at it. And dare I say, Georgia, this is a very apple sort of a subject. That it is. That it is. It's a lot. A lot of people come to me uh, with issues on focusing and saying that focusing is a problem they're having in their lives, and their lives would be smoother, more relaxed, and more efficient if they could focus better. So we figured, let's put a show on it, put it all together. Now, one thing you disabused me of immediately is that focus is not um, being oblivious to things, uh, not paying attention, or otherwise uh, engaging in destructive behavior. It's actually a positive tool, right? Definitely. Definitely. I, yeah. So if I'm ignoring you, it's not me being focused. It's me actually not paying attention or communicating. That might be you just being rude to me. Yes. Perhaps that, that is not focusing though. If you are working on something, if you are a performer, if you're working on a job that has to be done by a time limit, if you are, you know, playing a sport and people are trying to break your concentration in order to have you perform at a lower rate, then that's when focusing would take over. So yeah, then so let's, ignoring would be good. Let's start. What is, what is focus? The, the beneficial kind of focus. When you use the word focus, what does it mean? In my in the way that I'm going to talk about it and the focus that I mean today is being able to concentrate on one thing, being able to close off the rest of the world so that you can put all of your mind, infinite emphasis and productivity on completing that task efficiently creatively and quickly. Now, what about multi? I mean, there's this myth of multitasking that I can do all these things at once. I mean, it's almost like you're considered heroic if you can do, you know, you're juggling this, you're doing this, you're typing with your feet. Um, Is focus just not being as productive as possible? I love the typing with your feet. We don't actually multitask. That's uh, a misnomer we often say, I, I hear women say it often, that women can multitask, men are single parsing units. That's not true. We can do more than one thing at a time if one of the things that we're doing is nothing that needs higher brain activity. So we can breathe, we can chew bubble gum, we can walk. But if you have to think and problem solve, then you're going to need to concentrate and you cannot do two things at once. It does not... It, One of the things is that we believe that multitasking will make us more efficient at both. Not only does it take us more time than it would to do one thing and complete it at one time, cooking being a little bit of a difference. If something's cooking and has to heat up and we go back to it, it's a little bit of a different situation. But getting one task completed, we're able to concentrate and not worry about it because if not in the back of our mind, whatever other project that we were working on is going to be there and it's going to be taking up units of our time and space. And then to get us back into the mindset to complete, say, task one, there's a waste of time in between that. Transitioning between activities takes a mind shift and that mm-hmm. wastes time. Yeah, I noticed when I was younger, I used to think that I could multitask because I could have the television on uh, while I was writing or drawing or working. Uh, And I just realized later in life that I was alternatively not paying attention to my work or not paying attention to the television to the point that I wouldn't know what was happening in one or the other at a given time. And now I can just start working and I won't realize it and the the TV will be off. You know, it's 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 a being self-aware about where your focus is is kind of enlightening. Right. You can, you know, do your homework and watch TV. You'll be less efficient at it, though, if you do. All right. So why? 
And why? I think that uh, uh, Triple J from the chat room says, you know, that's there's a difference between juggling, juggling and multitasking. You're, he's exactly right. He's exactly right. So why, ev- like evolutionarily speaking, I mean, if you can speak to it, why do we why do we need to focus? Wouldn't it be better for us if we could do eight things at a time? If we could watch out for saber tooth tigers, spear ourselves a fish, and you know, knit ourselves a warm jacket all at once. Right. Well, what happens is that when we are highly anxious, if we are, which is why one of the techniques will be breathing that we'll talk about today. But when we are exceptionally anxious and worried, our stress level goes up and then our focus, instead of being concentrating on one thing and only seeing that one thing, our mind is spread out on on a broader scope so that we will make sure that no danger comes in and gets us while we're not paying attention. So you'll notice if you're really engrossed in a book or a project, someone might be able to get really close to you and you don't even notice that they entered the room. If you're highly anxious, that's not going to happen. You're going to be concentrating and you'll be tr- like noticing every little sound or noise, um, any distraction that comes in. It's going to take your attention to make sure, oh, that's not a danger, and then you'll go back to work. Oh, I'm not doing this, and you'll go back to your work. So that's the difference between it, and that's why anxiety has a huge factor with being able to focus. All right, so uh, that's what it is. Why does it matter? Why should I care if I can... I mean, I know you said it's efficient, it's productive, but at the end of the day, why should I really care if it takes me eight hours to finish my homework or my work assignment instead of six hours? Well, besides the fact that there's a two-hour difference that you could be doing something better during that time is that if you're able to do something and have a good skill at focusing, you'll also perform better at what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned that it sounds aptly, but if you've read anything about how Apple functions, it it's very much this focus thing. They've said that they're more proud of things that they've said no to and that they would prefer. One of the most famous things is when Steve Jobs returned to Apple, he saw that they were making an incredible range of completely um, inconsistent products, and he drew a simple grid and said, we have portable, and we have desktop, and then we have consumer, and we have professional. And that was it. He wanted to focus a, a huge company on just four things, and it was really beneficial for their turnaround. Yes. To work on something, to be really engrossed in it, to think about it. Again, when you're transitioning from activities, you're not going to be able to get fully involved in it. What I would like to give is a little bit of what we spoke about, about living a Zen life, being fully in the moment, having just that in you. You'll be able to get to a different level of productivity in order to do that. Um, So maybe even check out our show on um, being Zen about it. That's what focusing is. And it's cool. It's much more enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, Arguably, that's the Zen in the Zen and tech. I mean, if you look at stereotypical Yoda, Taoist, monk, Shaolin sort of Zen, you always have this idea of focus, meditation, exactness kind of going along with it. Right, right. Um, I'd like to go through, um, so we talked a little bit about what is anxiety and, and how that leads to not being able to focus, but I'd love to give out some tips that I have on how to help yourself. So say that you don't have very good focus. Maybe you're anxious. Perhaps there's a lot of things happening in your life. There's actually some ways that you can train your mind to focus more. And some really fun and cool ones. It's probably one of the most enjoyable things that I teach. I I enjoy doing it. I did it before I was a therapist. I did it when I started martial arts because it helped me fight. And I think made me fight. Better. That's what I believe. I might be wrong. Well, talk about a stress state. I mean, very few things are as stressful as, as being in combat. Right. Especially when, for me, uh, I had a fear of failure. So when you enter the ring, you know, two, two, two men enter, two men enter the ring, one man leaves. I felt that way. Like you're putting everything on the line when you're going in there. So my anxiety was exceptionally high, so high that I would, you know, someone would touch me. I would feel like I was jumping out of my skin. So what I did was I would do a little bit of a meditation beforehand, close off my mind, and just concentrate on the goal that I wanted to have. And I believe that's why I, I was able to win. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's 
it's almost and it sounds odd but it's almost like you get to see the world in slow motion um things kind of get calm and get understandable and coalesce around you and it's a hugely important skill it can let you succeed in a situation where i think otherwise you might face failure right so i'm going to start off i'm going to actually change i have a, a list of like 13 things that i are helpful and some of the stuff are even being chatted about in the talk room in the chat room but one of them is a type of meditation that I do. It's a little bit different, a little bit more active, and it's simple. You can do it with your children. You can do it with yourself. It works very effectively. Now, we start off with the basic breathing techniques, which we'll get into together, but then we take it to another level in that for this, I try to remain completely still still and with my eyes closed and not move for a period of time. I take all of my energy and I focus on my breathing and on my pulse and I start off with say five minutes. You can then move it up to 20 to 30 minutes and the benefits are almost miraculous. The studies are through the roof about what meditation does and the benefits to that but it can, you heal faster. They did a study with 50 year olds and they one group meditated every day, one group did not. The group that meditated every day after a year had their minds, they had the plaque buildup as if they were only 40. So their brains had actually regenerated 10 years. The studies are so crazed and not done by hokey yeah. um, universities, but big named universities. I mean, and they're consistent too. I mean, they're not, it's not just once in a while. No, they, they're, they're going through the roof. I could say, I say often to my clients, if I could tell you that there's a pill that would do this, everyone would buy it. It would be sold out. Yet, unfortunately, because it does take time, and meditation takes practice as with any other skill, yeah. a lot of people won't do it. But this is amazing, and it makes you feel good. Yeah, so if it suits your nature, I mean, if it's something that you're inclined and able to do, then it's definitely very beneficial. Right. So we start off, and I'll, I'll show you how I train it, is that I sit comfortably um, and then I do my my breathing techniques which you can take a look a little bit in more detail at the breathe the show on breathing but I'll do it quickly so I breathe in through my nose and I breathe out through my mouth and and then I just relax my body let it stay calm and I close my eyes I I always do and then what I will do for my clients is during that period of time as they're trying to concentrate, I will try to distract them with noise, um, sound effects, I'll walk around, um, try to make them laugh. So they're actively trying to stay completely still like a statue and focusing only on staying still and controlling their body. Now, that body control has the added effect of being able to control yourself under high-stress activities. And it lowers your anxiety because you're so busy trying to stay still, you're not thinking about what was making you anxious. So in order for anxiety reduction, you have to keep your mind actively working towards something. And after five minutes, if you do that every day, you'll notice that your mind will be able to calm itself. You'll lower your levels of anxiety, which will help you focus. And would you recommend that you start slowly, almost like an exercise activity with small periods of time and ramp yourself up? Yes, definitely. Um, I do this with um, six-year-olds to 15-year-olds. I used to do it for a martial art class that I taught during the summer. Um, some of them were actually in the chat room at one point in time. I would do it for 10 weeks. And these were children that had ADHD, uh, were hyperactive. Some of them had autism. Some had Asperger's. At the end, every single child could remain completely still. Some of them were able to hold, and these are like seven-year-olds, six and seven-year-olds, were able to hold a ice cube on the palm of their hands and let it fully melt without moving. Loud noises, I would poke them, I would um, put a little tiny feather on their arm that would tickle them. They would stay like statues. Their parents were in awe and shock. And I hear a lot of parents with ADHD children this will work miracles for them. I did it once with my son. The next day, his teacher said he had the best day that he had ever had in school. So this training works exceptionally effectively and especially exceptionally quickly. I have not yet found a child that I could not have this work with. So 
so, try it out and see. I mean, one thing comes to mind, and, and there seems to be almost two different schools of thought about this. One is that you want to create as a, as distraction-free an environment as possible. You want to have no noise to distract you. You want they have these full screen writing apps, so there's you don't get to see any other part of your screens. So nothing on your computer distracts you. No know, Twitter, no IM, nothing like that. Uh, ev- you basically do everything possible not to distract yourself. And the other school of thought is that you want to learn to overcome distraction, that you can never control and rule out every possible, every conceivable distraction. So you want to teach yourself not to be distracted. Is one or the other better? Is a middle ground good? I mean, what should we be aiming for? They're completely different. What you want to do is when you are working, you would like to have a clutter-free environment because even if you are, and again, you want to do both. You want to work on your focusing, work on being able to control yourself because if you work in, say, a large office building and there's a lot of people talking, it you're not going to be able to control all of your environment. And so because of that, you want to practice your focusing. So doing the meditation every day with focusing exercises is exceptionally beneficial for that. Along with that, if you're working at home and you have full control over your environment, you should, um, well, let's go through it. One, sleep. Make sure you've slept enough the night before. If you're able to sleep, you'll lower your anxiety, period. Your mind is scattered if you're not getting enough sleep. Watch the sleep episode. Yeah. Sleep is one of the most important things for dealing with your stress. And playing the new version of Tiny Wings all night is not considered sleep. That was taught to us in a previous episode. <laughs> that is not. That is not. The next thing is the multitasking that you already mentioned, Renee. One thing at a time. Do it. Yeah, I think that, I mean, uh, there's this, uh, I will talk about this on a future episode that we plan, but there's right. this cool thing called getting things done and people love their to-dos, but that itself can be distracting. The weight of everything you have to do can be a distraction. So if you can have one thing in mind that you need to get done next, it can be wonderfully um, liberating and can help you get a lot of stuff done. I, I love that. I love that. Just have one task per day, focus on that, and then do it. But a lot of people tell me that they just procrastinate. You know, it's, 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 I, I had that today, interestingly, talking about writing up what we're going to do on focusing. I surfed down to Reddit for a second. And I was like, what am I doing? Why am I on Reddit? That does not help me at all. And so wait, I said, wait okay. you were researching the episode on focus get it by getting distracted on Reddit? Yes, I, I used my own procrastination for a while. Um, but no, but I, I don't think that's in, pieces, but I won't. No, I don't think that's inconsistent. I think that you know it, one of the keys to focus for me at least is, and I, I think I've discussed this before. Is like for example, if it's three minutes till the hour, I will give myself that time off. It's like a three minute holiday or vacation where I do something else, whether it's watching TV or looking at Reddit or anything that's not my task, because it's almost like a cheat day for a diet or something. It just it lets me control my distraction instead of my distraction controlling me. That it does. That it does. Though um, there's a great quote about procrastination which says, it's amazing how long it takes you to complete something that you aren't working on. Touche. So I give myself a timer. When I was working on my thesis, I would say, I, I, and I'm not a, a highly prolific writer, it takes me a long time. I'd say I'm going to work on it for 15 minutes. Only 15 minutes, but I'm going to work on it completely for that time. Worked out really well for me. Little tiny chunks, and I felt good. And I would often work for longer than just the 15 minutes, but it was an imag- it was a manageable amount of time. Yeah. So I'd put it there. I, I might use a timer. Um, rewards. I love rewards. Well, we've and it talked just about me concentrate on just that. We've talked about setting reasonable expectations before. I mean, we did a whole episode on goal setting where you said the key is to have goals that are attainable. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And enjoy it. Be fully there. Be zen in the moment. If you're going to do something, do it with everything you have. It will lower your stress. You should not be thinking about, um, you know, my Zen and Tech show while I'm doing the I'm More show. I should be just there trying to be inactive with that so that I can at least, you can at least do one job completely and enjoy it. 
So what about, for example, perseverating thoughts? Because you, just when you mention I should be thinking about I more when I do I more and Zen and Tech when I do Zen and Tech, but sometimes you just have these, whether they're stress related or excitement or whatever, you just have these perseverative thoughts that, that are knocking around in your brain. Right. Often what I will say is that I, I will give myself a time to worry about something and I'll say, you know what, you know, and, and I would do the same thing with assignments for school. I would say that I will deal with that at this time. At, you know, in between the shows, I will make sure that my notes are in order for one to the other. As I'm getting ready, I'm going to spend, you know, 15 minutes on getting my notes ready. And then, no matter what, I'm moving on to the next stage. Because what happens with that, with those negative thoughts, is they keep you in one cycle. They keep you in place. They're like a block. You need to get past that to the next stage. And by giving yourself time limits, when you will worry and bother yourself with things, you say, you know what, while I'm sleeping, I'm supposed to be sleeping. I can worry about what's going to happen during my day when I wake up. But right now, it's non-beneficial to that. I'm not going to solve anything. And if that's not the case, then wake up, write it all down, deal with your to-do list, and then let it go. Yeah, and, and that applies too to, to writer's block or artist's block. I mean, it, one of the tricks that I always use is if I get stuck with a certain sentence or even a chapter in a book, I will go work on something as far removed from that as possible uh, just so that I can build a pattern of success again because the, the worst thing in the world is to sit there and not know what to do. So I will right. immediately move, even if it's quoting something, I will move to something that gets words on the paper or lines on the board and lets me get back into the flow. Yes, I think that this kind of goes into what you spoke about before is what kind of an environment should you have while you're working on something. I think that for most amount of work, a decluttered, so if you haven't watched you know, watch the cluttering, it's, it's great how everything kind of fits into what we're dealing with now, but dealing with the declutter, having a clean environment is often the best environment for being efficient with your time. If I have the computer on, Reddit again, I'm slightly addicted to Reddit right now, it's going to pull me in and I'm going to want to surf just for a minute, which then becomes 10, which then becomes 20. And I don't get the time to do the work that I had to. So turning off your tech, I don't have any ringers or beeping and, and other things on my phone is really Yeah, me too. To my that. notifications are off. Everything's off. I don't even have a ringer on my phone. I have my alerts and that is for alarms and that is it. Um, I'll get a pop-up so that if uh, one of my clients needs me or there's an emergency, I'll be able to answer that. But besides that, there's nothing. And it's, no it's, beeps, stings, calls. It, it's good to mention that. I mean, depending on what phone you use uh, and what apps you use, you can set rules. I mean, if you have a BlackBerry, I believe on Android 2 and iOS 6, you can say that only these people actually ring. Or mm -hmm. if someone calls me two or three times in a row, let them through because it's an emergency. But you, you can carefully... Um, notification should not become annoyance or pestering or a distraction or an overload. It, sh it should be something that works for you and not the other way around. So if you make sure only the really important stuff comes through, you have much more time to focus on what you should be doing. I think that it's also nice to, to take a look at what your environment might be. If you find, like as you said, Renee, writer's block, um, you will often do something completely different. I had, was doing a painting and I, I, it was not going well. I did not like it. Um, and then what I did was I found inspiration in something else. I went off, looked at different art, different things, got my mind into a different mode, and then went back to it after I felt enough creative energy. And it worked out really well. Yeah, no, I, uh, I absolutely agree with that. Um, so sometimes you might want a relaxing, busy environment instead of that. Where do you usually do your writing, Renee? Uh, I like to vary it up. I mean, it's one of these interesting things. People often ask me what my favorite th this or my favorite that is, and my favorite thing is variety. So I will work at home, but then I will go and work at a at a coffee shop like Java U or Starbucks, or I'll go and work at a friend's house, just so that the environment around me is changing. And I feel like that always keeps things fresh and keeps things alive, uh, and lets me focus more than if I was in a boring, sustainable environment. Yes, I think that that's a great uh, idea. A lot of um, painters, a lot of writers will switch things up a little bit. Also, it gives you a different feeling. Yeah. We spoke in the chat room about listening to music. I love that. And I'll tell you why. One is they found that people perform better on math tests by listening to classical music. It actually can be any music that relaxes you and allows you to not overthink things. Our brain waves become different. 
that there's an extra little tiny trick to this is putting on your earphones at work. People will not bother you as much. Yes. Even if they're not on. Why do you think I'm wearing these right now? I thought you were listening <laughs> to me. I'm so hurt. Um, people won't bother you as much, yeah. if, even on the bus. So you don't even have to have the music on if you do not wish it to be so. But if there is a lot of chatter, a lot of negative energy at work, putting on your earphones, you can listen to something calm and peaceful and relaxing. It keeps your mind focused on what is the task at hand. People won't yell something at you, which again, you, the more, you know, if, if they like distraction a lot, the more effort they have to put into contacting you means that the less chance that they will contact you for inane nuisances and you get the benefit of listening to something that you enjoy which will make you more productive and the last thing i'll add because we're starting to run low on time is that and i'm going to call back another show but uh, there, it's very important to have boundaries uh, especially with family and with people you work and it it sounds mm -hmm. terrible but it's good for everyone so for example um you are not their google if they can find something on google they should not be interrupting you when you are working or relaxing uh er everyone has a capacity to figure things out for themselves and by trying to be there for everyone and I, that's you know our caretaker episode you are actually doing them a disservice if you have clear boundaries and sometimes it might mean actually turning your phone off turning Twitter off, closing your web browser so Reddit is not there. You have absolute control over your environment, and that's what gives you the power to affect change. Exactly. You can close the door to your office. Yeah. And that's fine. I will not, I don't answer my phone often. No, absolutely. That's okay. I don't feel any guilt. They're like, Aren't, don't you feel bad? I'm like, not even a little bit. That's our classic saying other people's expectations are not your obligations. Exactly. I love that line. Me too. I love that line. And you can enjoy the time that you have. Yeah. And so uh, turn off the alerts, turn off the buzzers. Though, Renee, I have to mention really quickly, I do use alerts and reminders for things that are important that I might forget. And that too. helps me then, you know, I'll say like, this is the time when I'm going to do the work for this. And so I might use an alert or reminder for that and then fully focus on that. Yeah. No, I, uh, I absolutely agree. Awesome. Georgia, where can we find out more about you? You can find me on Twitter at Georgia TIPD. And what is the homework for this week? I would love for everyone to try the um, statue meditation, working on controlling your breathing, your heart rate, slowing it down, and trying to com stay completely still once a day for, let's say, three minutes. And nice. see if you can do it. And I would love if you're working on this, just tweet me how many days you were able to do it and if you could stay still for, say, three minutes. And if you want to up the game, have someone else that you care about and trust make noises, move around the room, and try to see if they can make you laugh and you stay completely still. It's like still those Pink Panther movies or Balky Bartakamos when one of them is a ninja trying to get the other one. That's so funny. Yes. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Yeah, tweet to me and let me know how you're doing. And we also have a Zen and Tech forum. And if you go to forums.imore.com, there is a Zen and Tech forum. So if you want to share your homework, get help, ask questions, uh, or just you know get a little bit of support with it, you can go right there. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, you can find me at Renee Ritchie. You can find me at zenintech.tv. You can find all of us at zenintech, or you can email us at podcast at zenintech.tv, or just leave a comment on this show when it goes live on the blog. You can find all of our shows at mobilenations.com slash shows. And Georgia, I'd like to thank you again for sharing us. I, I think this is a really important topic that helps us live a uh, better life. So I'm, I'm thankful for you for sharing on it. Well, thank you. It means a lot to me and um, everyone that sends in your personal stories and talks about how it helps. Like I do this because I love it. I do it during the daytime because I love it. So I appreciate that you take the time to share your moments and how the show has helped you and how you're using it. If you have any ideas, CARES, we'll be doing also a show on parenting. Yes, a Zen and Tech uh, special series on parenting. So uh, we will do that as well. So send in any questions, any parenting questions that you may have, and we'll uh, take care of that as well. And I want to thank our chat room. Talk about being involved and sharing and giving back. They are fantastic each and every week. And if you have not yet done it, please come. Please join us live. It is Shakespeare the way it is meant to be done. That's Fun. it. That's all I got. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.